What's up guys, it's your boy Polish Bullet. First of all, I want to thank everybody who joined my first live stream uh, on Sunday. It was, from my perspective, it was pretty cool. And thank everybody that, you know, interacted with me and super chats and everything like that. So we probably gonna do more of that. It was just fun, you know what I mean? I enjoying this whole conversation with the community. So thank you guys for that. And now we're gonna join uh, Roger. He gonna tell us his story about the knock sensor, the whole shenanigans, because he already changed it twice. I hope Hyundai actually gonna watch that video and you know, we need a remedy. We need some, we need Hyundai to do something about that because we're scared to drive in the rain. We don't wanna wash our cars anymore. You know, it's ridiculous. Hyundai, please, we need a solution. So we're gonna go right now. It's gonna be more like a interview type of a thing, you know, podcasty kind of you know I never done this before we're gonna sit in a restaurant we're gonna have some fun you know eat something talk about knock sensors and other issues so yeah guys uh, yeah let's go and see Roger so I'm here with my buddy Roger you guys know him you see other other videos so Roger your knock sensor issue can you tell us more about it because you said there's a bunch of twists and turns right, and stuff is. like that. So, so all right so we have the <laughs> we have this i'm on my second one the original one lasted i started using that car wash in july of 2022 and i used it two three sometimes four times a week for a calendar year and, and then about the second week of july of last year the original knock sensor gave up the ghost and after oh, yeah. after three visits they finally replaced it yeah i remember we actually made a video about it with roger explaining what happened to the first knock sensor so it's going to be included you guys can check out the link but what happened this time so I mean, going forward my buddy uh suggested to get rid of the underbody wash because we thought maybe the water was coming up under the, yeah, yeah. but there's a splash panel underneath the car. Yeah. I so I got rid of that. So the end of July of 2023 till January 30th of this year, the knock sensor went out. But this time I pulled out of the car wash and I made it three miles down the road before it triggered <clears throat> excuse me all the other times it triggered about 300 feet out of the car wash so now we have a new variable instead of 300 feet we got three miles so i get home and it said 1326 which obviously you yeah. know what that yeah. code means so take it to the dealership the first time there's gonna be four trips back to the dealership. I'm not gonna so, lie. I mean, sorry to interrupt I, no, you. No, no. The, the funny part is that my, I was about to pick up my car from a dealer after fixing my knock sensor. And then I remember you sent me the message. That was, that was like Sunday or something. It, your car was at the dealership yeah. done and mine was going in. Yeah, and he just dropped it over the dealer. And <laughs> like what's weird Sunday. about, and the variable with your car is you're not an insane person like me. You're not washing your car three, four times a week. Not that you many. <laughs> washed it before you went to Miami and it sat. Yeah. And then we had uh, we had snow and ice and then we had like freezing fog. And then you start your car up and you're halfway to your job site yeah. and your knock sensor yeah. came on, right? Yeah, I was thinking about maybe it happened because of the cold. That everything how, froze. How, so. how far into your trip did it happen? Uh, I would say like, 15 minutes, see, maybe see. five, 10 miles. So there's another variable. Yours took a considerable amount of time. Oh yeah. And miles. Like Mine, halfway basically. Right, I live three and a half miles from the car wash to uh, where, I, where I live. So yeah. I got, I was literally a half a mile from home and then it triggered it. So anyway, we go to the, we go to the dealership and it's, I have a little code reader, but the car says, it says trouble with the electronic control unit. So we all know it's ECU. Yeah. But my code reader said 1326. So we know I, I obviously have experience with that. So the dealership calls me and tells me their, the tech line said to replace the ECU. 
it's funny because your ECU was tuned. Yes, my ECU so was tuned, but we didn't expect that really. But there's a separate, there's a code for an, a bad ECU. So I was like, okay, do what you got to do. So I was like, okay, so I'm I'm out, I'm out my ECU. They put a new ECU in the car. Fine. I waited a couple days. Yeah. Went to the car wash. Popped the code again. And I'm like, okay, and, and, the, and the car went in the limp mode and 1326. So it's still the knock sensor. You just replaced the ECU on your dime. Yeah. So I take it back and get a call back a couple days. They're going to put, um, I'm so confused on what they did first because the, they did the dielectric it's grease, which dielectric they did on your grease, car. Yeah, yeah. So they did the dielectric grease, took the car for a ride. While they took it for a ride, it, it threw the code again. So yeah. I'm like, okay, now I did it on while you guys had the car. Yeah. They call and, like so they call and tell me this. And um, so they're like, we got to talk to TechLine. <clears throat> that's the answer for everything. TechLine, TechLine. So apparently that's the thing. All, all dealerships, they have a tech line. When a yeah, car is yeah, under yeah. warranty, they have to do what TechLine says. So I get a call earlier, like a day or two later, early in the morning. And I'm like, oh, a dealership's calling me early. And my service advisor says, we think we found the problem. I go, what is it? <laughs> At this point, I was kind of like, what I was kind of dumbfounded already. <laughs> we found a corroded wire for a corroded ground wire for the ECU. And I'm like, we just, just replaced the ECU, but maybe you weren't looking for a ground wire. Yeah. So it was, it was corroded. So I'm thinking, well, I, if it's corroded, it's maybe that's also from how much I washed the car. But I don't want to let them off the hook because a car, a car should be able to handle a car wash. A, a, a repeated car wash. Nice, right? Now we all know that people have had issues with the knock sensors. Like the guy in Florida had a problem with it driving in a thunderstorm, and his car went into limp mode too. So I was like, "Great!" So they they cleaned it up, put it back on, took it for a 20 mile test drive. It was fine. So I'm like, "Great." So at that point, I'm like, I'm, I'm safe. I'm now. I'm really safe to take it to the car wash. I waited a week. January? No, it wasn't. Yeah, because you drove for a few days. I did. I drove they, it for a few days. They replaced it, and the car was fine. They, and so, at, just to recap, they replaced the ECU, tried the dielectric grease, and then they found a bad ground for the ECU. Yeah. So I waited a couple days. I washed the car uh, on a Sunday and it pops the code again, 1326. I, the dealership is also uh, about a third of a mile away from the car wash. And I drop the car off and, I, and, I, and they have a drop off box with a note. And I said, at this I, point- I wonder what that was. At this, that was. <laughs> yeah, at this point, it's the knock sensor. Please fix my car. Now, the very first time when I had the ECU, replaced they gave me a rental car yeah i got a, a kona inline and that's the only time i had a rental car so all these other times i'm without a car so i had to inconvenience my girlfriend to take me and uh -huh. to work and pick me up and one day i actually walked home because the dealership never called me and that's another little fold i walked 3.6 miles home because i was so mad i was going to call the dealership and see if they could give me a ride home but i was so mad it was a sunny 40 44 degree day and I walked home. It took me 72 minutes to walk home. I was so, wow. I was so mad. I was so mad about the whole car. And then as you know, I, I was like, I, this car is like a lemon. I so, remember the frustration. Yeah, I was very frustrated. You know, I love, I love the car, you know? So they finally replace the knock sensor. But on my paperwork, the tech line, again, this tech line, the tech line told them to inspect the valves. They thought I had huh? carbon buildup on the valves. Okay, and, I didn't know that. <laughs> right, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So 
they inspected the valves. My car's got 16,000 miles on it. There's no, there, the, the valves were clean. Even if we were using 87. Yeah, so the valves were clean and it says that on the paperwork. So I got clean valves and they replaced the knock sensor. Now, but the funny part is that, mind you, this is the same dealership we went to. Yes. On the Palatine. Yes. I told them right straight up, it's a P1326, it's a knock sensor, it's a known issue, fix it. They took it in, they, they, they tried this dialectic grease, they worked, they changed the knock sensor, bada beam, bada boom, done. Right. But you went all through all this now, shenanigans. Now, at, at this point, I probably could go to the car wash again, but I, I'm not interested. <laughs> now, the first knock sensor lasted one calendar year with repeated car wash uses. The second one only lasted six months, so we're going down, not up. So, you know, and we're in Chicago land, so we have to, you know, in the wintertime, you gotta, you, you kind of want, it's in your best interest to wash the oh, car, yeah, obviously, because yeah. all the salt, all the salt even everything. though we yeah. had a mild winter, but that's not the point. But, so, I had, at this point, I had opened up a case with Hyundai, and if all of us can call these people and complain, we might be able to get something done about it. So, they, I will say, you'll leave a message with the corporate people they will get back to you so they call me and they're like okay we got your car under advisement yeah and and i told them everything like i'm talking in this video right now and i can hear her typing away and making notes um and by the way marson had a great experience at the dealership and so did i the the, de the dealership was great i had no issues with the dealership I'm never going to be mad at the dealership because they didn't build our car. No, no. They just serviced the car. They didn't. They didn't build it. They didn't do the engineering. I mean, they tricked you, right? They gave. They gave me a loan and basically next day, you know. That's, I know because you have to come back so many times. Right. They. They. They just maybe couldn't give you a car. They, well, they didn't have them available. But, they didn't have them available. Yeah. So they did have the the Kona N line available for me. So, but, I I'm talking to this lady on the phone and. Um, I, I, I want them, I don't care if it's under warranty, I want somebody with, some engineer with a big old pocket protector and I want them to figure out yeah. what you're doing here because the knock sensor is on the block, the intake manifold is in front of it, yeah. and then you have a space, and then you have fans, radiator, air conditioning condenser, space, and the grill. Yeah, How I, is the water... I think there's actually like a foam type of insulation on top of it. You can see that. But, so. but it's, it's not one use of the car wash that's making this happen. So we need to establish that in the video here. Mm -hmm. This is repeated use over time. So if anybody has like ideas on why is this happening over repeated use over time, like. Is the plastic getting brittle? Is there a little seal that's bad? Uh, the wiring harness, they all, the wiring harness, I specifically asked about that, and they said everything looked good, but they did find the ground wire corroded. I wonder what that could be. There's a lot of people having that issue, actually. So. Even in the heavy rain, not necessarily the car wash. So, I haven't had any issues with the car. The, so this was just this past Thursday. She calls me back and I'm trying to understand her on the phone. Her English is not so good. And they can't buy, they can't, <laughs> like your me. English is fine. The, the, the car is not eligible for Lemon Law because it didn't happen four times in, the, in, in a calendar year of the first year of ownership. Oh, so that's when you can so, file for I, I lemon guess law? In, in Illinois, apparently, that's what it is. Okay. Every state's going to be different, obviously. But she sends me an email stating this. And then there's a PDF file. I click on the, to the PDF file, and the PDF file is giving me instructions on what I have to do for Hyundai to buy my car back. Okay. And I'm like, well, <laughs> there's an instruction. There's yeah, should it should be in the menu. <laughs> it says that they are going to buy my car back and I'm like, well, the email said 
they weren't buying it back, but the attached PDF file clearly said that. Yeah. So I call the lady back and leave a message, and she calls me back like within five minutes, which I was like, well, that's great, five minutes. <laughs> they were waiting for yeah, you. Yeah, it's yeah. She calls me back and she is profusely apologizing about okay. this. And she said, I, I, uh, I'm sorry, I put the wrong letter in there. I'm like, okay, I said, I'm not, I'm not gonna turn you into your boss. <laughs> and, but one thing in the, in the original email was, um, for the inconvenience or customer satisfaction, they offered me um, a gift card for $250. And I'm like, oh, okay. Something. I, I, I am appreciative of that. I wasn't looking for a gift card. I want, again, I want some pocket protector engineer guy to come out and even if they have to build a little coat to put around the knock sensor. It, it, so this doesn't happen to myself or anybody else. Um, so I, I was complaining about the that this very thing. Why can't somebody build something around it, you know, and have a recall and like a little like shrink wrap or something. So now this is what they're they're going to give me. They're actually instead of giving me the two hundred and fifty dollars. They're giving me my car payment. They're making one of my car payments, and I can, I'll just okay. say this, it's significantly more than $250. So again, I'm not looking for the money. I really want the car fixed, but they're, they're, giving, me, um, they're giving me a car payment, and I can tell you that um, I'm sure the Polish Bullet viewers watched our exhaust comparison video. I'll just say that that, um, car payment that they're giving me is going to definitely has definitely paid off my mid pipe so my mid pipe is free oh i mean at least it's they did something you know it is but i i mean want maybe it, it's not... i want it fixed though oh, I, I, I want but but here's the other thing also to add to this the they're telling me we're not telling you to not wash your car at an automatic car wash we're, we're, we're asking you to try a different car wash. So I'm scratching my head about that one well, because I'm like, well, first of all, you that's don't know, really. right. You don't know anything about the first car wash and only car wash that I was going to, cause this yeah. is a, a touch free wash and you've been through it. Oh yeah. Yeah. And it's got the spinning, it's got spinning pressure. It, it goes into the front and then it kind of goes up and goes around the car. So without knowing what the problem truly is what is going to a different car wash what is that going to do for me because who's to say the other car wash is better or or worse than the one i'm going to maybe they're just trying to get lucky or something you know? i because they I, I remember people saying like some of the car washes they use more pressure than the other ones or something like that so i kind of understand but that's well, that's like i mean at this point i'm kind of like a little bit why, why don't they build like some kind of a cover to put over your your grill to keep water from going in because i'm like i don't know nobody can tell nobody can tell me how the water is getting there because this is definitely an issue with moisture yeah it is it's it's trick it has been triggered by the car wash now, the other times it happens within 300 feet. Now I've had it happen twice where it took three miles. So we, the only constant variable here is it's being triggered after I leave this car wash. Yeah, I wonder if the knock sensors themselves are, are just more I, functioning too. See, we thought, we thought maybe the original knock sensor there was a bad yeah, batch yeah, of it because it was because the too. car was the car was built during covid so maybe the their supplier they didn't have a lot of people yeah, yeah. uh they, they didn't have a, a good quality of people that were building the knock sensors or maybe the knock sensor is just engineered poorly because they do have their the their case too. there are two campaigns for um recalls on um knock sensor from hyundai one is uh it's, a, it's called uh campaign 996 okay. and the other one is a uh, 953 the 953 
one is for older cars and it um, it's a software change where they they dial back the uh, sensitivity so if anybody out there does a simple Google search Hyundai knock sensors there is a, a wealth of information so they know there's a problem just fix it maybe it's just easier for them to to fix it when, you, when well, it gets to that point. Well, their answer to everything is, well, your car is under warranty. It's like, I don't care if it's under warranty. I don't want to take the car to the dealership all the time. I know. I mean, I'm that, lucky. That's annoying for sure. I'm lucky. I live close to the dealership, you know? And, yeah, but... and, and the, like I said, I'm going to say this again. Hyundai of Palatine, the dealership was great to me. They were great to you. They're very personable. Um, yeah, they, they helped us out for sure. They, but I, I will say though, they 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 did notice the modifications on my car. They noticed the power flex bushings, and I said, the power flex bushings were put in, like, the first week of September of 2023. The the it didn't throw a code until January 30th. Yeah. So well, I got you did it. You, you yeah you yeah. put them on and. But I've got my ducks in a row. So it's almost like they were, they were trying to find... Kind of blame something Trying else. to blame something else. Yeah. And, and you and I, we have the, the street versions of, the, bu of the, uh, the, the bushings. We don't even have the aggressive I got, ones. I even got more aggressive than yours. The, the, the dog bone is the same one. We got a purple. But the other two, I got race. I got the black one. So it's even more vibration. Right. So, and then another thing they, they said... Uh, at the dealership was, um, well, you have a, um, a throttle body spacer. And I go, what are you talking about? I don't have a throttle yeah, body spacer, no. They were probably looking at my turbo inlet pipe, which again, the dealerships, sometimes they don't know the parts they're looking at. The technicians definitely do, but the service advisor yeah. doesn't. So, I mean, I have a turbo inlet pipe and I have a, a, a end performance intakes, which, the, in, the intake is really good because it's it's a Hyundai part, um, and then they brought up that that my mid pipe. Well, the mid pipe has nothing to do with the knock sensor, so. Um, yeah. I went to Schaumburg dealership and they told well, me my exhaust. May, no, they actually told me not the exhaust itself, but maybe when I was installing it, I could nick the knock sensor. And I look at the guy like, do you even know where the knock sensor is? How am I? How could I physically hit the knock sensor with the exhaust I was putting in? And the guy's like, I don't know, I'm just saying. I was like... That's Patrick like, Hyundai no. in Schaumburg, Illinois, <laughs> tried to blame Marson <laughs> for replacing the exhaust and nicked, nicked the knock sensor. Which is like that almost on the he, other side of, of, of the he, engine, basically. A dealership is not going to void your warranty if you do a cat back exhaust because you're not touching yeah. anything forward which is the emissions uh, cats you're there. doing you're doing cat back there are no yeah. emissions parts after the catalytic converter and they want to charge me for diagnostics yeah that that's but see we didn't have that problem at hyundai of palatine no i, I you know, we, seriously, we had when i left before i left petrol before i picked up my car i called hyundai of palatine and I asked them straight up, listen, I got an aftermarket exhaust. Are you guys able to work on my car because I got a problem with the knock sensor? And the lady told me if the exhaust didn't cause the failure, and I, then, then yeah, no problem. We're going to fix it under warranty. And I said that's not even remotely possible, but I, okay. So, and, yeah. And that's, the way, and that's the way it should be. Obviously, she said if... if if you want to fix your exhaust and you got an aftermarket one, well, we're not going to work on it. I was like, yeah, duh, it makes sense. But no, I can't complain. The Honda of part time, they hooked me up. So Patrick was just... I guess in closing, I mean, um, as long as I don't go through yeah, this the is, same... This is a little bit longer video than yeah. usual. Yeah, there will be a lot of uh, radio edits uh, during this, <laughs> but, uh, but I, I'm... I'm kind of scared to even take it through any car wash. So going forward, uh, the weather's warming up, so I don't really have to. But the reason I got this subscription at the car wash is because I I live in an apartment, uh, but where yeah. I where I where my apartment, there's trees 
in the background and, and there's a dead pine tree and there's two pine trees and they in the summertime they they spray out a little bit of sap yeah and because the yeah. car wash is so close to my work i can just quickly go after work it's only three quarters of a mile away so i just run it through the car wash so that's the only reason yeah i like my car clean but it's convenient to get this damn sap rinsed off the car and then if there's occasional bird poop it comes off the car right away so now it now it makes sense i mean you, right so i you never I'm, told you you gotta avoid car wash, right? but i'm not i'm not gonna do it and you know i'm, I'm not i can't get rid of the car because they i don't want to get rid of the car and um uh -huh. so um you know so i'm keeping i'm keeping the car and i'm keeping it out of that car wash so but you've um, already been through it already before you went to you went through the car wash the day they fixed your car I, Oh, hell yeah, for, that was the first thing I did. I went to your car wash, which is yeah, right next right door, there. basically. Basically next door, I, right. I, I bought the most expensive one with all the spraying you can get. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I was like, if it's gonna die, it's gonna die. I will take it back. I actually went to the touchless car wash already, probably like five times, five, six times by now, even today. It's, it's Because great. the thing is, when you get the bait, I mean, I, I know it's not like the, the best way to wash your car, it's but when you best. but when you don't have time and, and everything, plus I clean my car less time by you know hand washing it, right. and I put some like whatever ceramic coating, kind of a spray so it repels a little bit. Yeah. It, so then I use the touchless if I don't have time to do it, right? Right. So the thing is, when you buy the the base base one for like five dollars, you don't have the spraying the other kind of spray. But that one don't do anything. Literally. Mine, it's, um, it's just you got to upgrade to mid tier, and almost all of them got the undercarriage. My car, the car wash I have now, it um, it's two passes of soap, uh, two passes of rinse, and then the spot free rinse, and then you go through the dryer. That's it. So mm -hmm. that's the other thing is when it goes through the dryer, it's got those two dryers, yeah, and it's, yeah, yeah. it's it's pointing straight down. Is is it pointing straight down and, and pushing? The water in, but um, the, we got a gap in between the hood yes. and the plastic front. But the knock piece, sensor is technically the knock sensor is buried underneath the intake manifold. No, I don't know how that. And how I it mean, works. is is the wind from the dryer causing a vibration? Yeah, but when you drive on the highway, I'm pretty sure it's even more air it's than constant. going through the you know, grill and stuff. And the and the thing with the the bushings, the the power flex bushings. If that if that would have caused a problem, it would have caused the problem immediately. Yeah. Oh, yeah nothing basically. nothing that we've done to our cars has caused any kind of an immediate problem. Oh, and one more thing. I got I picked up my car on a Friday with one of the repairs. I think it was the ECU when they replaced the ECU. Yes, it was the ECU. And when, when I, so I picked it up on a Friday, we went to the Chicago Auto Show on Saturday, and then I washed it on Sunday. And then I took it to the dealership. And they said, did you put like a race chip on the car? And I said, no, I, I picked the car up. Uh -huh. I picked the car up on Friday. I went to bed and got up early to go to the auto show on on Saturday and we drove all over Saturday and I said well no I didn't put it on there why do you ask he goes well the technician noticed that your car was going 90 miles an hour in third gear with uh with with uh three-quarter throttle and I'm like okay hey, I'm like have you ever driven one of these cars it's pretty <laughs> easy to go pretty fast in third gear without using a lot of throttle but I'm like, it's a performance car. Are you, you're certainly not going to tell me now that I can't drive can, the car, drive right? Third, 90 miles an hour. <laughs> so, I'm, again, I, I'm not trying to in incriminate Hyundai of Palatine because they t took care of me. I mean, they took care of the car. They were very personable. and But this is just, I think it's, I think it's over. The only thing I'm worried about now is what if I get caught in a thunderstorm and it happens because if this happens if this happens again in a storm 
somebody is going to be buying this car back, yeah. lawyer or or not a lawyer, because if it happens during a thunderstorm, I can't keep it. No, that's I, I just I'm I can't. Not keep lie. It. That's ridiculous. Well, let's hope it doesn't happen. But but we know for a fact that this has happened to other people in other parts of the country. So yeah. You know, yeah. so some people said they, they, they so drove in the if you have a story about this, add to it. And because um, I think because these cars are kind of rare, we all need to, you know, band together. And, you know, a, a lot of people in unison saying the same thing to a, um, a, a, a phone, you know, somebody who takes the phone calls from Hyundai, they're going to get tired of hearing from us and say, we need to fix this car. And. Like I said before, they've had other issues with the knock sensors. I think we gotta kind of stand up as a community. We, we and definitely let, and need let to. them know they got because it's ridiculous. Uh, but you, you can't go to the car wash without worrying if you can get home or not. Well, or drive in the my middle thing of with, thunderstorm. But my like, thing with this car on. wash is, in a calendar year, if if I washed it twice a week, that's 104 car washes. Yeah. It didn't happen on car wash number one. It didn't happen on car wash 67. It didn't happen on 88. It might have happened on car wash 105. So what what has happened over this time to make the knock sensor weaken? Is there a seal that's weakening? What is it? Because it's not happening with one car wash. You went to the car wash right after your car got fixed. Yeah. You had no problem. I went to the I car wash many times after the original knock sensor was replaced. I didn't have any problems until that one particular car wash. I never had a problem. I used, I mean, maybe not as much as you, but I used car right. wash probably at least once a week too. So what's happening? What, and it's wearing it at, down. At basically 40,000 mile mark. Right, it's wearing down. Yeah. What's wearing down? It's got, they checked it's got the wiring to and they checked the wiring harness and they said everything was fine. The only thing they found corroded was that um, the uh, ECU ground, uh, gr uh, negative ground. I wonder if they just wears out after t some time. It doesn't matter how much miles you got, but I basically got two years on the on the thing. They I and forty thousand miles. When I did all the research, they said. Knock sensors are generally the life of the vehicle. So that means our car already dead. Yeah. Well, I saw another thing. It said <laughs> the other one I saw when I Google did a Google search. They said like 150,000 miles, and I'm like, you know, I'm like, well, what's, why is it, why is it doing it? What's what's wearing it down? That's my thing. Yeah, it's maybe bring the, the heat, comments. Heat, bring, of, heat of the engine. Bring the comments out, because the more the more knowledge is key here. We and what's the lesson from today? Don't go to the car wash. Don't drive in the rain. <laughs> and obviously, don't speed yeah. 90 miles an hour on the third gear. Third gear, I don't know. <laughs> so they must have went into the black box and found that. I mean, that was recent. They, um, they can check it out. I mean, the thing is, if you're going by the ECU, they put the ECU on Friday, and I did... I did hammer it a little bit with my buddy in the car after the auto show and then took it to the car wash and then it threw a knock it threw the knock sensor code so I mean I can't there's there there wasn't even enough data in the ECU unless there's a separate you know unless there is an actual black box in the car that records everything from day one I I, I don't know about I think that there, I think there is something like that. there's there's got to be I mean Roger went to the car show. He, he he watched bunch of EVs. He was so pissed off. He had, he had to leave the place. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyways, guys, comment, like, subscribe. You guys know the drill. I want to thank Roger for sharing his story. You know, like like he said, we guys stand up as a community and you know tell Hyundai that's not right. We gotta use our car washes. <laughs> There's a second generation, so, uh, a next generation of the car coming at the end of the decade, so they got to sort this out. Yeah, I hope they're going to use a different Absolutely. knock sensor. Okay, guys, so thanks for watching. I know this is a little bit longer video than usual, but a lot of, you know, good stuff. 
And yeah, obviously we don't have Roger in more videos as always. He's my buddy, so I hope you guys like it. Likes and subscribe, and I see you in the next one. Bye bye.